Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 339, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. You can find this in your hymnals or on your computer screen at home. We invite you to stand, sing, and worship together. you pray with me? Lord, we continue to seek out your grace. We also continue to find it in the least expected places. Whether it's after an argument with a spouse or a parent, in the unexpected kindness of a stranger, or in something we don't even recognize until weeks later, your grace continues to amaze astound and surprise us. May we use our time together this morning to prepare ourselves to give and receive your grace. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning again, and welcome to worship this gray but cool Sunday morning here at First Baptist Church of Greenwood. We are so delighted that you have chosen to come and spend your morning with us here uh, and if you are a visitor today, though, I would like to extend a special word of welcome because I know that there's a lot of places you can go. And so whether you're just here because someone dragged you or you know someone or if you're looking for a new church home, we are just so glad that you are here. Uh, and if you are especially a first time visitor, there is a little card on the back of your bulletin or a QR code that you can scan if you're a little more technologically inclined. And if you would just fill that out and, and drop that in the basket in the narthex on your way out. And that's just a little way for us to get to know a little more about you and to have a way to kind of reach out to you. And thank you once again for coming to worship this morning. Uh, I would now like to invite any children that are out in the, in the congregation this morning to come and join me on the steps for a couple moments. <laughs>
Well, good morning, everyone. It is so good to see all of you. So, is there any big thing that has started again for y'all recently? Oh, yeah, there was a party. Something, something that started for all of you? School. Yeah, we all are back in school. And since it's been kind of a couple weeks on that, I think it's been long enough since we started that we're going to have a little test today. Did you have everyone ready? <laughs> well, well, don't worry. It's actually it's not going to be that kind of a test. You see, I was doing a crossword earlier this week. I know, I know. I'm, I'm just an old man. But I was doing a crossword, and the clue was for something. It was, it was a way to determine something's merit. And the answer was a laugh test. And so it's if you give an idea to someone, and if they laugh at it, then you know that that's maybe not such a good idea. So here, I've, I've been brainstorming some ideas, and I'm going to tell you all them. And, you're gonna, and we're going to determine if they're a good idea or not. Okay, so what if I told you that I could, I could build you a robot that would do all your homework and your chores for you whenever you wanted? <laughs> that, that would be amazing, but I'm, I'm not sensing a strong sense of belief in me. <laughs> okay, what if on a Sunday morning... Instead of when we walk down and process down the aisle, what if instead, or if we come out in the back, all the ministers, we started out up in the balcony, and we rode in on a zip line while Josh played the music for us? Well, see, again, y'all are saying this is awesome, but this time there was definitely some laughter, so maybe that's, maybe that's not such a good idea. <laughs> okay, what if... What if some random stranger just kind of came up to you and said, hey, you can fly? <laughs> wow, you would really laugh at that. <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of creepy if they knew so much about you, huh? Well, so here's the thing, thanks, is you are getting us, you're getting ahead of me, because what we're going to hear about in a little bit is a story where something like that happens to Abraham's wife, Sarah. She has some random stranger come up to her and tell her that she is just going to have a baby even though she was 90 years old. And so Sarah did not pass the laugh test. And she said, oh boy, this sounds like a really kind of crazy idea. And so that's something, though, about God. Is sometimes God offers us these wonderful things like, say, you can live forever or I am going, you are going to be loved no matter what. Things that sound crazy and ridiculous and almost make us want to laugh at the thought. But with God, these things are possible and are just part of our everyday life. And so that's what I want you all to think about today as you go, is to remember that God's grace might not be what you think, might be more than you think any of us can do, but God can do so much more for us. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, we are so thankful that you do so much for us. We are so thankful for all the ways that your grace is shown to us and all the ways that you bless us beyond our understanding. We are mostly blessed with these children and all that they do for us in this church. May they never forget that you love them and we love them. In your name we pray. Amen. Our New Testament lesson this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 2, 4 through 7. It can be found on page 170 in your New Testament portion of your Pew Bible. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and grace and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. 
Our offertory hymn this morning is hymn number 287, When the Church of Jesus. You'll find this in your hymnals or on your computer screen at home. I will let you know that this is a hymn that will be new to most of you. Josh will play the hymn all the way through, and then we'll sing all three verses. I would direct you to be, pay close attention to the words. I think it's a lovely hymn tune. Please stand and sing together. Please join me in prayer. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we come to your house today seeking your presence and guidance. We thank you for the many ways you have blessed us, for all we have has been provided by you. Please bless our offerings as we reach out to share your love with others. In Christ's name, amen.
Please be seated. In our time of prayer this morning, we want to remember Miss Helen Bryan, who's at home. We want to remember the family of Pam Walner as they grieve her passing. We want to remember the ongoing war in Ukraine. We want to remember church members and family of church members who are undergoing treatment for cancer. We want to remember church members and family of church members who are home recovering from recent stays in the hospital or dealing with long-term illnesses. For these and other prayer concerns, let us pray together. Loving God, this morning we pray for CBF field personnel all over the world as they seek to share your love with those whom they minister. We especially pray for Baptists in Ukraine. We learned this week that over 400 Baptist church buildings have been destroyed due to fighting in the war-torn country. We pray for pastors and leaders of congregations as they seek to continue to worship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray this morning for what seems to be the effects of climate change in our world. Rivers and lakes are drying up, ice caps are melting, and there is flooding along the coast. The threat of food shortage for some is all too real. So this morning we pray for resources and food for those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for a time that we can pray corporately for others. This morning we pray for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Surround them with your comfort and peace. Hold them close to you during these difficult days. And may they find hope in the promise of your Son, Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whom we have mentioned aloud this morning. We are reminded of others who were not mentioned, who are recovering at home from recent procedures or stays in the hospital or rehabilitation hospital. We pray for healing and comfort. We pray this morning for those of our church family who face medical treatments as well as those who anticipate medical tests. Give them peace. We pray for others who care for spouses and family members. Give them strength and hope during long, sleepless days. For these, we pray for energy and endurance. We acknowledge this morning that we bring our own concerns that have not been mentioned aloud. In these next few moments of silence, we pause to lift them to you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're thankful for the opportunity to come before you with our prayers. This morning as a community of faith, we pray the prayer that your son Jesus taught his disciples saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Would you please open a Bible to Genesis 18? As you do that... I will share that on this past Monday, there were many of us who received with sadness the news of the passing of Frederick Beekner, a Christian, a minister, a teacher, a writer, a theologian, all par excellence. And he influenced so many of us in so many wonderful and grace-filled ways. I am indebted to him, coincidentally, or perhaps providentially, for the central idea and much of the shape of my sermon today. Genesis 18, we're going to read the first two verses and then skip to verse 9. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat near the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. 
He looked up and saw three men standing near him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed now bear a child since I am old? Is there anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, oh yes, you did laugh. This is the word of God for our time and our lives. Thanks be to God. I believe that there is grace in laughter. I believe that laughter spreads and scatters 
grace. If grace is one result of laughter, one cause of laughter is surprise. The unexpected turn, the twist that we didn't see coming. I heard about a woman who was checking out at Walmart, mostly buying clothes. The cashier wanted to make sure that the customer did not get home with a mismatched outfit. So she was checking the sizes on every piece of clothing. The customer, however, was engrossed in writing her check, so she didn't see what the cashier was doing. She only heard the cashier say, ma'am, you have a large bottom and a small top. <laughs> the customer looked up from her checkbook in a huff and said, well, you don't look so hot yourself. It's the surprise that makes it funny. Of all the surprises that Abraham and Sarah have ever had, this one takes the cake. After all, he's a hundred years old, and she's pushing 91, and now three men have come to tell them that they are going to have a baby. At first, Abraham and Sarah just grin, a slight upturn of the corners of their mouths, surprised and a little embarrassed. But the more they think about it, the funnier it seems. Sarah wonders if she will go to the maternity ward or the geriatric ward at the hospital. Abraham wonders what the Medicare people are going to say when they get the bill for the delivery. And before long, their smiles have turned into chuckling, and they're chuckling into outright laughter. There are a number of reasons they're laughing. They're laughing not only because of the baby, but also because the three men, whom they had taken to be traveling salesmen, turned out to be angels, messengers from God. They're laughing because the angels seem to believe what they said, and they seem to expect Abraham and Sarah to believe it too. Most of all, they're laughing because once again, God's grace has shown up in their lives in the most unexpected way. Has it happened to you? Oh, I don't mean traveling salesmen that turn out to be angels. But it could be something equally surprising. A shattered relationship that somehow God picks up with grace and stitches it back together again. A financial burden that seems unbearable. And then someone with God's love in their heart shares generously. Overwhelming guilt so that we feel completely enveloped in darkness. And then the light of God's grace breaks through and we are forgiven completely and permanently. Someone we love more than our own life discovers the grace of God and it's as if Jesus has come into our own heart all over again. You could build a sermon around any one of those examples, but I thought I might tell you about my first year in seminary. I had two jobs. I got up at 3.30 every morning to deliver newspapers, and I worked in the seminary cafeteria. But still, some months the income wasn't as much as the outgo. And seemingly, every time I became really concerned about how to pay a particular bill or how I was going to get through a certain month, I'd get a note in the mail, usually from someone who went to Pendleton Street Baptist Church in Greenville where I had worked during college. The note would say something like, God has continued to bless us 
And we want to share some of that with you. And there'd be a check. A hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars. A lot of money in 1983. When that happened, I always thanked God. And I always wrote a thank you note to the person, as my mama taught me. But neither of those was my first response. First, I would smile. Relief. Surprise. Joy. And I would read the note again. And I would look at the check again. And very often my smile turned into laughter. I remember vividly sitting all by myself in that little apartment wearing a t-shirt and cut off sweatpants, laughing out loud at the grace of God and the faithfulness of God's people. In hindsight, I wasn't laughing by myself in that little apartment. I'm reminded of that when I read Genesis 20. Genesis 20 is where we get to read about the birth of this promised child. It says that they named the little boy Isaac, which means laughter. Because, Sarah says, God has brought laughter to me and everyone who hears will laugh with me. It is the laughter of pure joy in Genesis 20. But that's not what it is in this morning's text. In this morning's text, it is the laughter of unbelief. Sarah laughs at how ridiculous God's plan is. In the doublet of this story in Genesis 17, Abraham laughs the same laughter of unbelief. So in this morning's text, when Sarah is confronted about her laughter, she denies it. She lies because, the text says, she was afraid. Well, who wouldn't be afraid after laughing at God? They laugh in the face of God. And yet, in the end, God doesn't get angry or chasten them. Instead, God laughs with them and gives them a child whose name means laughter. It is a divine joke, a wonderful surprise. The laughter of grace. I think it's the kind of laughter the prodigal son must have experienced after squandering all of his wealth and hitting rock bottom. He makes that long journey home, all the way rehearsing his speech to his father in the hopes that the old man will at least give him a job shoveling fertilizer. But before he can get halfway up the driveway, his father runs out to meet him, clamps him in a bear hug, and shouts for everyone to hear that they're going to have a party. At first, the prodigal smiled. Relief. Surprise. Joy. And somewhere in the middle of that party, as grace and forgiveness really broke through, that smile became laughter. Laughter at how foolish he had been and how foolish was his father's love and how grateful he was for that. I know of another father whose love evoked unexpected laughter. I didn't know this man personally. He belonged to my friend Jim Somerville's church when Jim and I were both pastoring in Kentucky. This man and his wife had three sons, the youngest of whom was four or five years old. This little boy was, to put it kindly, very accident prone. Candor might involve using the word clumsy. 
It seemed like every day he broke, turned over, or otherwise upset something in the house. And it had happened so many times that this boy was beginning to have deep remorse and self-doubt, much more than anyone would want the child to have over a simple accident. One Sunday, the family came home for church, and they sat down to lunch in their church clothes, as was their custom. The dining room table was beautifully set, which probably made it that much worse when the little boy reached for something and knocked over his glass of iced tea. Against the backdrop of his many other accidents, tears immediately began to stream down his face. The father realized there was nothing he could say that was going to make his son feel better in that moment. So he didn't say anything. Instead, he did something. He reached out and knocked over his own glass of tea. The two brothers immediately took this as permission to knock over their glasses, which they were happy to do. The mother thought she understood what the father was trying to do, though she wasn't sure that she endorsed this particular parenting strategy. Nonetheless, she reluctantly reached out and tipped over the last glass still standing on the table. The little boy immediately stopped crying, just out of shock and surprise. And then he grinned, and one of his brothers snickered, and another giggled, and the next thing you know, they were all laughing. And the more they looked at each other, and the more they looked at the mess on the table, the more they laughed. In the midst of their laughter, they all went to the kitchen, together and got some dish towels and came back to the table and cleaned up the mess together. And for the rest of lunch, and for that matter, for the rest of the day, every time it seemed like the laughter had finally subsided, somebody would snicker and it would start all over again. That's a parable about who God is and who God has called us to be. What if we were to live our lives with this kind of outlook of grace? What if we looked at other people's messes and saw not an opportunity to pass judgment, as we so often do, but an opportunity to find a way to clean up the mess together. What if in the midst of their pain and tears, we invited them to grace and joy and laughter? You realize that on a much more profound level, this is what God has done for us. In the mess that is the human condition, God has cleaned us up, cleansed us. And in the midst of our pain and tears and sin and sorrow, God has invited us to grace and joy and laughter. My, what a foolish and laughable God we have. Hallelujah. Will you pray together with me? Loving God, we come this morning to bring you our hallelujahs in response to your amazing grace. We confess that we do not fully understand it, but we are so thankful. Thank you for working for good, for grace, 
in all of the circumstances of our lives and remind us again that you never intended us to keep your grace to ourselves. That you mean for us every day to share with others the grace that you have first shared with us. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. For our sake, for the sake of your church, and for the sake of your work. Amen. God's grace is always invitation to the people of God. Keith Jameson is going to come in a moment and lead us in singing that beloved hymn, Amazing Grace, number 587 in your hymnal. As God's Spirit leads, come, sing, pray in a way that allows grace to come into your life. Would you stay? And now in the name of God, the Creator who has given us life, in the name of Jesus Christ, God's Son, who has redeemed us by His love, in the name of God's Holy Spirit, who empowers us to receive and to share God's grace, go from this place to be God's people and to do God's work.